Earlier this week, we told you about a lawsuit against the gym chain Planet Fitness. Yvette Cormier complained to the staff of her Midland, Michigan gym after seeing a transgender woman in the women's locker room. The gym later canceled her membership, saying it wasn't Cormier's complaint that led to the cancellation, but her showing up three days in a row to warn other customers about, quote, a man in the locker room. Earlier this week, we heard from a couple of professors, one of them transgender, who said that transgender people should be able to use the locker room of the gender they identify with. Joining us now is David Coleman. He's the attorney for Yvette Cormier in her suit against Planet Fitness, which we should note is still active. David, welcome. Thanks. Good to be with you. And your client claims invasion of privacy and emotional distress, among other things. Can you describe the harm that she's alleging was done as a result of Planet Fitness's locker room policy? Sure. Uh, The case is simply about the expectation of privacy that all people have in bathrooms and locker rooms and men's rooms and women's rooms. And essentially, this case involves Planet Fitness, which has an unwritten policy that we believe creates a hostile sexual environment for women and children. And it's it's essentially putting political correctness above common sense and common decency. So that's what the case is about. The lawsuit itself involves, like you say, invasion of privacy counts, a breach of contract because there was no notification prior to our client signing up that uh, this was their policy, and various violations under our state's civil rights law. Well, I guess when it comes down to it, it, you're sort of dealing with how you define a man or a woman. And does that person have the right to define that for themselves uh, and go into the locker room that they believe they should be going into? Yeah, that's a great question, because I think that's a, a misconception about what this lawsuit's about. We're not attacking transgender people. We're not saying they don't have the right to self-identify however they want. I mean, I may disagree with it or whatever, but that's not the issue. The issue here is where now it's bleeding over into other areas of privacy and other rights that other folks have, and the expectation that that has to be accepted in all circumstances. And I think, again, that there are lines that society can draw, and there's lines of common sense and common decency that, for example, biological men should not be allowed to undress and shower with women and 13-year-old girls, which would be the Planet Fitness situation, Um, and impose their self-identification on other people. They're the ones doing the imposing here. So this is not an attack on that person, uh, you know, that they don't have the right to make that choice for themselves. They can obviously choose to live their life how they see best, you know, what's best for them. Well, at what point can they use the the locker room, or can they at any point use the locker room of the sex that they're transitioning to? Well, I think, yeah, I I think, you know, I've been asked the question, well, what if a a biological man transitioning to a woman, for example, actually has uh, the surgery, and so now uh, um, is no longer biologically a man, uh, but has completed the sex change surgery, which locker room would, would she or he use? Obviously, it would be the women's room at that point because she would no longer biologically be a man. So it should just so, correspond to the anatomy, you're saying? Yes. Yeah, I, I think that's clear. And I don't think it's unreasonable for average folks and in, in society in general to say to these folks who are going through these changes in their lives um, to say, look, you know, until that's complete, um, to have some some lines, some sense of uh, caring about how this impacts other people, I don't think that's an unreasonable request. As you know, there are a lot of people who disagree with you, and uh, we had uh, some on the show the other day, uh, including Hilda Lindemann, who is a professor of bioethics, uh, Mm -hmm. and, and this is what she had to say. But you wouldn't allow people to not use a bathroom or a locker room if they were disabled. Uh, You wouldn't allow uh, people to ban them because they're uncomfortable being around people of another race. And so I wish people would just chill on this a little bit. How do you respond to that? She compared this to the civil rights movement and the idea that you could have somebody get upset, a white person get upset because a black person came into a waiting room, the same waiting room as them. Well, I don't think the comparison is valid at all. A disabled person is disabled. They're not transitioning to anything. An African-American is African-American. They're not transitioning to anything. 
And so what we have here is a situation where it's a biological man, okay, who's saying, I have the right to impose myself on you in a women's locker room. That but is they not may the same. see themselves as a woman, apples right? Apples. What's that? They may see themselves as a woman. Well, they may see themselves as a woman, but other people don't at that point. And again, you know, you're asking individuals, this, this type of argument is so ripe for abuse. Um, uh, how are you going to determine if somebody is sincere in what they're doing at this point or that they're actually on this journey or road to transition? How do you do that? I mean, this is so ripe for abuse for somebody to just come in and say, oh, I'm transitioning. I, I feel like uh, I'm a transgender person. I'm going to go and use the women's locker room, and then bad things happen. This is possible under these kinds of policies. In fact, I'm sure it will happen. And I'm not saying that about the person who's transgender or who's legitimately on that road, okay? I'm talking about these policies are ripe for abuse by other people with more nefarious uh, intentions. Is there any kind of locker room accommodation that would allay your client's concerns and also the concerns of a transgender person who wants to use the locker room of the gender that they're transitioning to? Okay, well, I would flip the question. Why is it a problem for the transgender person who is still a biological man? Why is it a problem for them to use the men's locker room? And look, you know, I've heard well, this argument Well, they may feel uncomfortable going into the men's locker room if they are, let's say, dressed as a woman. Mm-hmm. Well, and lots of other people don't feel comfortable the other way. So we're talking about here, we're trying to accommodate these differences here, okay, and do it in a way that it's not subjecting other people to unwanted situations that they don't want to be in in these locker rooms and showers. But back to your question... You know, is there some way to uh, maybe have, you know, for lack of a better term, separate but equal? I mean, I think that's always been shot down And if you're talking in civil rights uh, issues. But to have a, a locker room where maybe there's individual stalls or lockers with a shower or something that does not subject other people from either side to, uh, to anyone uh, being offended by, their con- by them being present or that sort of thing. I mean, there may be some ways to do that. But the bottom line here is I don't think the vast majority of people in America believe that it's appropriate for a woman's locker room for a man who is a man biologically to simply be able to say, I'm transitioning and I get to come into this locker room and you have to put up with it. You know, you call me old fashioned, you can say whatever. I don't think America as a whole is anywhere near that. And I don't think that imposing their moral viewpoint on the rest of us is appropriate either. So I'm open to discussions of having some way to accommodate. I think that's a legitimate, rational discussion. But that's where we're at. Well, let me ask you about your client, uh, Yvette Cormier, sure. and this, this case continues. But Planet Fitness says that they didn't cancel her membership based on her complaint in the first place, but the fact that she showed up three days in a row to warn other customers about, quote, a man in the locker room. Did she go too far? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. She wasn't running around yelling, screaming, harassing people, <laughs> that sort of thing. She was simply in the conversations that people have at gyms and talking with with people that they know there was letting other women know who had no idea that this was Planet Fitness's policy, letting them know that they were allowing biological men into the women's locker room and that they should be aware of that. That's all she was doing was letting people know that. And if this is a policy that, that Planet Fitness is so proud of and that they feel is appropriate, why would they be concerned that she's letting the patrons of Planet Fitness know about the policy. I mean, why does that bother them? I would think they would welcome that. That's David Coleman, an attorney based in Lansing, Michigan. Uh, his firm is representing Yvette Cormier in her suit against Planet Fitness. She's suing because they canceled her membership after she complained of seeing a transgender woman in the women's locker room. David, thank you for joining us. Glad to do it. Thanks so much for having me. And we reached out to Planet Fitness. They declined to comment. You can hear our conversation from earlier this week with two people who very much disagree with what we just heard. That's at hereandnow.org. And you can also leave your comments there as well. 